All right, welcome everybody. I just played Skibbereen by the Dubliners. Spansel Hill's another good one. It's a uh, story, true story actually, turns out, of an uh, Irishman who came to America during the gold rush and uh, uh, got tuberculosis, and as he was dying, he um, wrote this poem called Spansel Hill, thinking about his time back in Spansel Hill in, uh, in Ireland. And uh, he has a vision of flying over the island and meeting all the people he knew when he was young, and they're all old now, and... Um, dreams of the girl that he was in love with as a teenager and um and then he died and uh in the 1920s or so when uh someone was singing the song because somebody uh, found that poem and, and set it to music and uh an old woman walks in the pub and she's like oh yeah i'm i'm nell the farmer's daughter what yeah that's me he he, he you know he's my boyfriend and they moved to california to go to the gold rush and she was like 80 or 90 at that point and um She's like, yeah, that's me that he's singing about. It's a true story. And so, uh, kind of cool. Kind of cool. <laughs> I should probably change this background. Huh? All right. So, uh, anyhow, the, uh, uh, personalized. I do, I, I, I do, I do appreciate the artwork though. Uh, that is, that, that was nice of you. Uh, how about, how about you? There we go. Oh, that's, fit stretch there we go not bad. i like that one. okay so uh interesting way to die yeah i mean you know every man must die but not every man truly lives uh yeah uh yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of good uh good music good irish music skibbering spansel hill uh check those out i'll post them in the music channel later anyway yeah, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about today uh, first of all, uh, we need to go over the um, end of the year essay. That's the most important thing. Before you do that, uh, just in, in recent events, uh, the CEO of Twitter res quit. So that's pretty huge. He, I guess he was <clears throat> watching me um, uh, criticize Twitter. And nah. <laughs> now Jack Dorsey is uh, now focused entirely on Square. A friend of mine works at Square, by the way. And... Uh, Former CEO of Twitter, yeah. So he was splitting him, his attention between Twitter and Square. And now he's focused entirely on Square. He wants to take it into crypto, hardcore. Uh, you might have seen their uh, cash registers and and these little things. Um, so, um, like these things. So, um, I always got him confused with Squaresoft. I <laughs> into the guy's career. I wish. No, I actually don't. I don't wish him any harm. Like, I've seen him, I've seen him talk quite extensively. And he, he seems to be... He seems to be, I, I want to say, a pretty thoughtful guy. And uh, maybe maybe another way of putting it is uh, he's sort of um, um, stuck. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're kind of, you know, you made you made this, this beast, uh, right? Uh, you've made Twitter. You're responsible for it. And you can't really, like, shut it all down or, like, you know fundamentally change Twitter. You know what I mean? Like, you're kind of stuck. And so he constantly was getting called up in front of Congress and having to defend Twitter. And, it, you know, at one hand, it's like, all right, you reap what you sow. You, sow, you know what I mean? Like, you, you built this company. These are the consequences of your actions. At the other hand, it's like, man, I know I would not want to be called in front of Congress, you know, a couple times a year. Like, every time... Uh, you know, some some politician gets their account banned by Twitter. You get called up in front of Congress and have to defend yourself. Like that's the appeals process on Twitter. Like you get banned and then you get they hold Jack Dorsey up. Yeah, I don't know. Kind of feel bad for him at least a little bit. Uh, but he's going to focus now on Square and on crypto. And the, uh, in other news, um, last week we talked about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, which uh, I think the jury did make the right decision in that case. It was like a the, the only people I've seen opposed to the decision are people that didn't watch the primary sources. And, and this is something I've been hammering the entire semester is like, you need to like the media says one thing, the news headlines say one thing you need to go and like, look at the primary sources. And you know, the, the, the first guy that got shot was seen there literally pushing a burning trash dumpster. Like he was literally pushing a dumpster fire, yelling the N word at black people. Like this was not a, a black lives matter person. He was just a rioter, you know, and he, he came out of, ambush chase Kyle cornered him was lunging at him when he got shot like it was a clear case of self-defense 
And then last week, the Almond Arbery case was decided, and that was also a clear case of not self-defense. The um, these three these three dudes in the South uh, chased down a black jogger. Uh, they'd seen him uh, jog for a construction site, which, while technically illegal, isn't enough to you know arrest somebody. I don't, I don't think. And uh, the judge disallowed their uh, uh, defense of citizens arrest because they hadn't seen him commit a crime. And so, yeah, the jury was like, yep, they're guilty of murder. And all three of the guys uh, were convicted on uh, some of them all the counts, some of them some of the counts. And so, you know, as, as cynical as it's easy to be in our, in our society today, like in, in both the Rittenhouse and the Armand Arbery case, like, I think the, the jury's made, you know, completely the right decision in both cases. So, yeah, kind of kind of a heartwarming story, if not for the, you know, dead people, right? Which it's not a great... <laughs> You know, like, it doesn't bring the guy back to life. You know what I mean? It's, like, not... It shouldn't have happened, right? But at least uh, at least justice was done. So, there's there is that. Uh, your Discord's not working? Uh, you can't see him? It's not on? Change windows. Screen. Is this... Uh, can you guys see the, the screen? Uh, there's nothing on here right now. I'm just talking. Um, sure, you can all see it. Okay. All right, so, um, so that, yeah, those current events. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Vinan, if you want to post uh, some Hmong music, um, I would I would love to check that out too. I love folk music and stuff like that. It's um, interesting. It's very interesting stuff to see the musical traditions of different countries and, and how they differ and how they're the same. Uh, it, it's very interesting to see how like Chinese folk music, traditional music, and Irish traditional music are both pentatonic scales and. Um, before I even knew that, like, I actually had a folder for Irish and Chinese music on my computer, you know, and my wife's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. They're very similar, like, musically. I'm like, really? That's cool. All right, so, anyway, uh, so we got to talk about different kinds of reasoning today because your final essay, let's pull that up. It's going to ask me to log in, isn't it? Damn it. Is the downside to two-factor authentication? Can somebody please screenshot the um, the assignment? It's super annoying. And there's no option to turn that off either. It's super annoying. Um, oh, it's it's probably because I have the detail turned up. Let me let me lower the resolution. There you go. Final essay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're gonna go over the reasonings today. If somebody can just screenshot that, I'll I'll pull that up on the screen. I don't know where my cell phone is right now. I'm such a terrible computer science major. I don't even know where my... It's not on me. What's wrong with me? <laughs> You're supposed to be on your phone constantly. That's the rule. <laughs> All right. So we got... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well done, Bailey. All right. Here we go. So on this essay, it will be your GE requirement. Okay. And there's a link where you can find out more about your GE requirement. It's a minimum of 1,000 words. Make sure it's 1,000 words. Um... In, in Word, it tells you your word count, and there's also word count tools uh, separately if you want to do it that way. Um, cool. So out of all the social issues in computer science this year, talk about the one that resonates with you, with you the most. Is it the Theroc 25 uh, radiation uh, poisoning? Is it the uh, privacy issues? Is it the trolley problem with uh, self-driving cars? Um, piracy? You know, which, which whichever topic you want to talk about. Um, and uh, we'll we'll get to we'll get to um, yeah ethical frameworks uh, yeah we'll we'll get to some of these either today or tomorrow as well uh, and then any of the any of the bottom part too yeah thanks because we're going to be talking about the different kinds of reasoning today uh, let me pull the production there yeah that's the right that's the right one except it's going to glow you can see my face turn. And design. Thank you. And thank you, Bailey, for the thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about abduct. That's the thing that gets people. All right, so we talked uh, a lot of, about a lot of things. A couple of these things we haven't hit yet. We'll, we'll hit them, don't worry. Uh, but, you know, we've talked about plenty of things this semester. So you just pick one that, that you like. Um, so for your, uh, for your thing, it's uh, 20 points. And uh, it's its own category, so the points actually don't matter because it's 
seg- separate, like in its own area. So whatever percentage is the percentage. So don't don't pay attention to the points too much. Like some students are like, oh, it's only twenty points. Um, it's ten percent of your grade. So make sure you do it because if you don't do it, it's a letter rate. Okay. Uh, five points for using a deductive argument. Five points for using an inductive argument. Five points for using abductive uh, reasoning. Okay. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And then finally, you have to do a peer review. So it will be due next uh, Monday or Wednesday, whatever it is on Canvas. I can't see Canvas because I have my phone on me. Uh, and then you have to do a peer review on that before the end of the semester to get your points. Okay. And uh, you have to, uh, in your peer review, you have to identify their three arguments they make. And you have to agree or disagree. Was that, in fact, a deductive argument? Was that, in fact, an inductive argument? was in fact an abductive argument. So what the hell does that even mean? All right, so that's what we're talking about today. Um, next Monday, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, abduction, <laughs> alien abduction, right? So uh, deductive reasoning is uh, what we've been talking about all semester long with all the logic stuff, like all cats are mammals, all mammals are have hair, therefore all cats have hair. So deduct- that's a deductive argument. So a deductive argument is one that must be true Right, it, it, the, the the conclusion must be true if the argument is sound. In other words, if the premises are true, the logic's good. The conclusion must absolutely be true to, you know, whatever extent of absolutely true you you believe is possible. You know what I mean? Like two plus two equals four is absolutely true. Uh, but some people are like, well, what if we're all having a collective stroke right now? And, and when you said two, you actually said three. You know, and like there's always that whole thing which yeah you can kind of ignore i guess so to whatever extent that you believe something could be absolutely true deductive arguments are absolutely true if they're sent so uh squares are regular 2d polygons with four equal sides premise i'm looking at a regular 2d polygon with four equal sides i don't know if it is measure that nope it's not so this is a this is a valid argument. It's not sound. I think because I'm on widescreen, it it, it stretched it. So does it look like a rectangle to you guys, or uh, uh, are we able to relate in our essay stuff we've been talking about in here? Yeah, absolutely. Anything anything we've done uh, anything we've done in classes is, is all is all good. Okay. So just find a topic, some social issue in computer science that resonates with you that you found the most relevant to your life or interesting or you know anything really. Uh, but it, it's always good to pick a topic that you're like, kind of like, um, passionate about. Like if you're passionate about, um, you know, people should look at primary sources, which doesn't sound like something that people really get passionate about, but it's actually something I'm passionate about because it like, mm, like, ah, uh, like, you know, whenever, whenever I see a headline that's misleading, like it just galls me. It's like, oh man, you call yourself a journalist. You know, I did journalism for three years and I never once had a misleading headline that was designed to deceive people. And then you read the article and you realize it's not actually as strong a case as they suggest or something like that. Like we were taught, you know, to try and minimize our bias. You can never completely get rid of bias, but we were taught to minimize our bias and to, to pay attention to loaded words and things like that. And nowadays we're just like, eh, screw it. You know, whatever. Journalist and in- journalistic integrity. What's that? You know, and it bugs me. And so that's why, uh, that's why I'm so passionate about people looking at primary sources, because if somebody presents a story, uh, that's their view on it. Now it's an opinion piece. And a lot of times instead of news. And so I'm like, I want to see what actually happened. You know, show me the video footage of the Armin Arbery case. And I, I will, I will judge for myself if the opinion pieces on it are correct or not. You know, and clickbait. Yeah. It, you know, let's, let's, let's pull up Google news. Let's see how fast it takes us to find clickbait. Uh, this is now the world's most expensive city to live in study says what city that's why they want that's why they don't say they want you to click on it and of course this one tells you it's tel aviv but that's not that's a different news source right cnbc says this is now the world's you're like, oh what city is that is that my city you know oh well, that could be anywhere you know why Apple stock gained as tech stocks tumbled Tuesday. Why? Clickbait. They want you to click on it. This is why. You know. Uh, Marcus Lamb, a person who 
Uh, it was a COVID denier, died of COVID. Ha ha ha, what a dummy. You know, that's what they're going with there. Um, all right. Anyhow, um, what you need to know about Dutch Brothers Coffee opening. <laughs> what do I need to know? You know, so. Oh, yeah, that's that that that's interesting. I read the story earlier. Uh, the, um, yeah, the, the guy that the uh, man library is named after. Uh, <laughs> right. What it means for a market. Like, they don't tell you in the headline, right? It's not necessarily misleading, but it's definitely, um, it's definitely a clickbait because they, they, they make it provocative and they want you to click on it. Yeah. So, uh, location that is it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So deductive reasoning is when you have these premises and logic and the premises are true, the logic's good, therefore the conclusion must be true. That's deductive reasoning. It must necessarily be absolutely true if the argument is sound. You can't, you can't just be like, all right, you made a good point, but I'm not going to accept the conclusion with deductive reasoning. You know what I mean? Like, make a good point. I can't find anything wrong. With your premises, I can't find anything wrong with your logic. But you know what? I'm just not going to accept your conclusion. You can't do that if you're a rational person. If you want to admit you're being irrational, that's fine. Like, I don't care what, ar what kind of arguments you make about, you know, top ramen being a, a great college food. Like, I'm sorry, I'm just not going to accept it. <laughs> yeah. There is a world of difference. And I, I didn't even eat Japanese ramen for a long time because I had such bad experiences with top ramen in college. Uh, but there's a world of difference between like ramen when you actually go to a, a Japanese restaurant that serves ramen and like you know top ramen. So it, like, I, and I will fully admit I'm I'm being uh, I'm being irrational here. You know, like I just you know I can't I can't accept your conclusion no matter what. I'll I'll just admit it. You know, it's fine. So uh, tricks to bring the money. Casinos hate these methods. Totally legal. Find out the one uh, the one thing that if you do this, it'll save your heart from a heart attack. You know, yeah, it's clickbait. How many sources do you need? Uh, I'd say probably around three or so. Like I, I'm not, I'm not too hardcore on that. But yeah, you want to you want to cite your sources and you know any any anytime you have a, sor a source, you know just put a hyperlink on it. I, people always ask me, do you want MLA format or APA? And I'm like, I don't care. Just a hyperlink's fine. You know, the the whole point of a source, the whole point of a citation, is just so that if somebody doesn't believe you, you know, like we all know that uh, Caligula made a horse a senator. You know, like, is that so? You know, then you cite it, you know, and then I'm like, All right, okay, and you click on the site and there's a website that comes up and, you know, um, and then you're like, oh, okay, all right. You know, that's the whole point of a citation, like the whole formatting thing, like people like get so deep into like, if you put a comma here or whatever, and if you're writing an academic paper, that's one thing. Um, but like, uh, Right, you know, so you can, uh, <laughs> uh da, 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 da. Yeah. so that's, that's the, the whole point of a citation is just so that if somebody's like, I don't know if I believe you, you can look it up. And that's again, an issue I have with modern journalism where they'll like report things and not say where they got it from. Now, if they're the primary source themselves, I interviewed uh, Alec Baldwin on the, uh, on the set of dust. And he said, it felt like the gun was unloaded. Like, that's a primary source. That's fine. Uh, but if you're reporting something else, you should always cite it. Like, if you're saying what somebody else said, cite where it came from. And for me, like, a hyperlink's fine because that's, like, you know... Like, does it help me that it, that you have, you know, the name of the website on there? No, just give me the link and I'll click on it. You know, it's time to go. Okay, so... Deductive reasoning of X and Y, F, Y then Z, therefore X. Um, oh, that's actually, uh oh, X is true, therefore Z is true. Yeah, okay. All mammals of hair, all cats are mammals, Toby's a cat, therefore Toby is hair. Yeah, these are all deductive, good deductive arguments. Um, the, the square, unfortunately, is not a square anymore. So, <laughs> that, this is valid, but not sound. Um, uh, watch Interstellar Free. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to do a hyperlink to never going to give you up. <laughs> yeah. 
You can try it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rick rolling your professor on a 10% of your grade assignment is uh, definitely a high stakes, uh, high stakes gamble there. Okay. Um, all right. So inductive reasoning, um, inductive reasoning is different from deductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning is what we do in science. Okay. So science doesn't deal in absolute truth. The only people to deal with absolute truth are the Sith and logicians, mathematicians, things like that. All right. Uh, science doesn't determine things that are absolutely true and absolutely false. They're always sort of um, percentage based, right? We are 99% confident that the weight of an electron is between this amount and this amount. We're 95% confident that if you take uh, this drug, it'll lower your blood pressure, all right? That's how science works. And the fundamental, the fundamental notion of science is that what was true in the past is true in the future. And there's no particular reason uh, why that has to be true, right? Like, yeah, maybe you could say, well, the laws of physics aren't going to change. You don't know that, but it's like, eh, it's pretty good. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, you, you, yeah, you know, if, if you think that the laws of physics can change tomorrow, like, what, what can you do? You can't, you can't do anything, right? But more than that, it's like, all right, well, in the past, um, like, let's say you're doing social science. <laughs> social sciences are... Uh, or, you know, okay, in the past, people were racist. Therefore, in the future, people will be racist. You know, will they? I don't know. Like, you know, maybe. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's not the laws of physics dictating that. It's the laws of sociology. And so the laws of sociology are just also based on what happened in the past. And maybe that can change also. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, you know. It's it's really hard, and if if you look at like, you know, people predicting if Trump would win in twenty sixteen, you know, the the odds were like you know ninety five percent Hillary would win, you know, and and that was with all sorts of data, all this polling data, all of this, you know, pundits talking to each other, and you know, people having conversations, and all of a sudden there was just this widespread consensus that it was like a ninety five percent chance that that Hillary would win. You know, we get we get things wrong all the time, right? Because inductive reasoning is not certain, right? Like a poll would come out saying Hillary's going to win, so we say, okay, well then Hillary's going to win. But we don't know. You know, you, you guys see what I'm getting at here? Just because something happens in the past doesn't mean necessarily it'll happen in the future. But it's also the best that we have. So, uh, <laughs> my algebra teacher is shaking his booth. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mathematicians, logicians, and the Sith deal in absolutes, right? Um, but scientists deal with sort of like confidence levels. Like, I am reasonably confident that, you know, I am strongly confident, I am highly confident, you know, that if um, you get the... Um, COVID vaccine that you'll have increased protection against COVID, right? And that and that's how all these research papers go, right? Like, uh, it's not absolute protection. And this is something that, that irks me, like, when I'm at the gym watching Tucker Carlson, he's like, look, this person took the vaccine and they still got sick. It's like, yeah, n nobody's claiming it's absolute protection, you know what I mean? It's like 80, you know, 90%, like, you know, it, it, yeah, it drives me crazy. Like, when people confuse, you know, Partial with all, you know, it's a very common thing online as well, where people drop qualifiers. You know, I think that some historians um, do this. I, I said recently, I think some, you know, some historians act this way, like rather than arguing, they just say, we'll just refer to the consensus, you know, and they just will refuse to engage in argumentation with you because everybody knows this is true. You know, and they, they engage in hand waving and appeal to authority and all this stuff just because they don't want to have, because they don't know the facts really. So they don't, they don't want to engage in the facts. And so I, I said, some historians do this because I worked in history for 12 years. You know, I know exactly how the field works, you know? And they're like, how dare you criticize an entire field? I'm like, bro, I didn't say the entire field. I said some, some historians and they just mentally erase qualifiers all the time like that. Some becomes all. And, uh, 
Yeah, it just it drives me crazy. So anyway, so inductive reasoning is all conditional and things like that. So let's give examples of it. Because the sun came up every morning in the past, the sun will come up tomorrow. You guys understand? That's inductive reasoning. If you have any questions about this, you should ask because you have to do this on your essay. So you have to make an inductive argument on your on your essay. There's nothing wrong with it necessarily. You just have to keep in mind it's less certain than deductive reasoning. So do you guys do you guys understand that? Like because we you know we made observations of the sun and it rises in the morning every day, the sun will come up tomorrow. Does that make sense, Jonathan? Like, uh, yeah, it, it could be wrong though, right? Aliens could come by and blow up the sun. If it was hot today and yesterday, therefore it'll be hot tomorrow. Yeah, and and you're going to be wrong probably at some point, right? Because the weather's going to change at some point. But that's that's a that's a inductive that's an inductive argument. It's been hot all week, therefore it should be hot tomorrow. And you know maybe you're going to be right more often than wrong, you know, but you're going to be wrong at some point because it'll turn winter at some point. You know what I mean? So uh, that's uh, that's inductive reasoning. And so you you look at past experience and you make an argument about future experience based on it. Right. So my friend is always picking me up from the airport on time. Therefore, I'm not worried that he's going to pick me up on time tomorrow. Could be wrong. He might get a flat. There could be a car accident. You know, there could be an accident or something. Right. So you're just predicting what will happen tomorrow. Yeah, it doesn't have to be tomorrow also. Right. Could, you know, like um, if uh, Japan just closed down its, its flights again. Uh, but uh, I was planning on going to Japan next summer, as I often do. And, um, I was making plans based on the monsoon season in Japan, right? Like I want to be here because in past years, these are the rainy days in Japan and I want to work around that, you know, and here's the temperature in different parts of Japan. And I'm looking at past experience for next summer, which may or may not happen because Omicron or whatever is shutting everything down again. All right. You also have a final exam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you guys know what day the final exam is? So it's your expenses or others as well. Yeah, like like I'm saying, for for like the weather in Japan, it's not my experience. What I do is I go onto the Wikipedia page and I'm like, all right. Um, all right. Uh, weather in, uh, I don't know, Kyoto, Wikipedia. All right. And th this is literally how I plan my trips, you know, like where should we go to first, you know? And what the climate... It's usually in here somewhere. Climate there. Okay. And so they have, on Wikipedia, they have the uh, temperature and weather, uh, rain data for every city, you know, basically in the world um, per month. And so I'm like, all right, uh, average precipitation in Kyoto, all right, July is the rainiest month. Okay, so... Maybe we should go there in May, okay, or maybe August. You know what I mean? And so this is in my experience, it's weather data, and they've averaged it from ninety-one to two thousand twenty. You know what I mean? So uh, average snowfall, yeah, I go. There's no snowfall in the summer. Average precipitation days, so there's thirteen rainy days and twelve rainy days in June and July. There's ten in May, nine in August. You know what I mean? And then if I, if I check out uh, Sapporo, uh, climate, and you look down here, uh, average precipitation, look at that, not nearly as much, you know what I mean? The rainiest month in Sapporo is September, right? So maybe if I'm going to be in Japan, maybe I'll go to... Hokkaido in July, right? You know what I mean? And so this is an inductive argument. I actually don't know if it'll rain when I go to Sapporo because there's still a few days of rain, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's inductive. It's inductive reasoning. Based on past experience, um, my English teacher would scream at me for using Wikipedia. Come at me, bro. I don't care. So... <laughs> um, I, I'm not. I'm not worried about Wikipedia lying about the precipitation amounts. 
Wikipedia can be quite biased when it comes to anything political. Um, but for, for things like that, like, yeah, whatever. So, uh, <laughs> I, I'm a head out. Uh, what, uh, what did I say? Uh, oh, and you hear the final exam. Uh, July seems terrible. I don't know. I, I would check, but I, I can't, I can't log in right now. So I'd have to find my phone somewhere. So, uh, but you guys know what I'm saying by inductive reasoning? Does that make sense? It's like, I, I don't know if it's going to rain or not in Japan next July when I go to Kyoto or Sapporo. I don't know. But based on past experience, I'm going to plan my, my schedule, right? So like maybe I'll go to Kyoto in May and then Sapporo in July. You know what I mean? Like kind of work, work around it, you know? Uh, when is the final exam? Uh, all right, let's let's look it up. Uh, Fresno State final exam schedule. It'll be the thirteenth to the sixteenth. There you go. So. We got this week, next week. Uh, I think there's only classes through Wednesday. I think next Wednesday is the last class. And then uh, 9th and 10th are con consultation days, which basically means um, you can, if you have any questions, you can uh, uh, come to my extra office hours or whatever and ask questions. I don't think we have class on the 10th. I think it's just on the 8th. If you guys want, I'll just have class anyway or something. I don't know. Like, it's up to you. And, or maybe we'll just play Jackbox. Eh, it's up, you know, it's, it's fair. And then the uh, the final will go live on the 13th, and you'll have all week to do it. Um, once you start it, you'll have two or three hours or whatever. It'll be like the midterms. So. Um, uh, you demand class on Friday? All right, yeah, we can do that. That's fine. Um, okay. Go to college. It's good. <laughs> what, are you guys, uh, what are you guys talking about on chat? Uh, so on Wednesday the 15th, uh, no, like the whole week, I give you like, just do it whenever you want. That makes sense. So, um, basically at the start of finals week, it goes live and it closes whenever the last final is like Thursday at midnight, I guess. So anytime in that four day period, you can do it. And once you start it, you'll have three hours or whatever. To do it. Don't forget to text and drive, kids. Oh my gosh. I'm driving right now. Uh, but collecting the emojis, reactions on chat, so it's worth it. I don't know. You know, just, uh, you know, when you get into the accident, just be sure to tell the cop. Look, I got the skull face emoji react. I mean, it was, it was all worth it. College is killing you. Um, I don't know. I, 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 like I said, uh, last time I gave a meditation class was, I feel vaguely guilty about stressing people out, but it's kind of our job also. I, but I do what I can to make it not as stressful as possible. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. Inductive reason. Does that make sense? Joanna, do you understand inductive reasoning now? Like, um, based on my experience taking computer science one. Okay. <laughs> Every time you go to a family gathering, it's funny. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, a philosopher who's sometimes called the uh, father of computer science, Bertrand Russell, uh, there's several fathers and mothers of computer science. It's not like there's just one person who invented the field, but a very important person nonetheless. His name is Bertrand Russell. He was a uh, British philosopher, came from a noble family, and um, lived on estate. And uh, talk about his life. He's quite a, quite a, quite an interesting fellow. And uh, he he posited the problem of induction. Right. The, this is the problem with inductive reasoning. You know, if you're a turkey on a turkey farm. 
you would think, man, this farmer loves me. Look at this guy. He's like, he's like, he wants to be Saitama. I do not, I do not want to go to Saitama. <laughs> or, or, or are you saying One Punch Man? <laughs> um, yeah. Saitama is, uh, did you guys know that Saitama is a, is a city uh, northeast of Tokyo? And uh, people in Tokyo kind of make fun of people from Saitama, kind of like maybe how people in LA make fun of people in Fresno, you know, or how people in Fresno make fun of people from Visalia, or how people in Visalia make fun of people from Porterville, or how people in Porterville make fun of people from Two Rivers, you know, that kind of thing. Like they're, oh, those guys are all hicks, you know, they can't, they can't talk properly, you know, something like that. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so Saitama and One Punch Man was named after that for that reason. Anyway. So the, the the problem of induction um, is, you know, if you're a turkey on a turkey farm, you would you would make inductive reasoning that the farmer loves you, right? He's such a great guy. He feeds us every day. If we get sick, he takes care of us. You know, he builds a shelter. Uh, the foxes come to try and eat us, and he kills them with his shotgun. What a great guy, you know? And, uh, and then one day, you know, as Thanksgiving's rolling around, you see, I'm hurting all of your friends into this uh, this room, and none of your friends are coming out. And one of your friends is like, oh, man, you know, we should go in there and see what's in there. You're like, I don't know, man. It looks kind of sketchy to me. He's like, no, nah, this, you know, look look at our past experience with the farmer. He loves us. He'll take care of us. You know, then, of course, you're, you're wrong, right? And so that's, that's the problem with induction is that no matter how strong your past experience is, you can always be wrong about the future. So it's less certain than... Uh, <laughs> yeah, free food, you know, uh, right. Okay. So, uh, or if you have a, a barrel of jelly beans, you know, all of them are lemon lime flavor. One of them is booger flavor. If you've ever had Bernie Bott's, uh, uh, flavor, uh, was it the, the Harry Potter jelly, bean, jelly beans, you know what I mean? Bernie Bott's is, um, free Wi-Fi. Yeah, I'd definitely go if it said free Wi-Fi. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're looking at booger flavor. Um, you know, you keep eating these jelly beans. But like, oh, look, these are all lemon lime. You keep eating. You're like, look, I'm getting more and more confident. It's lemon lime, and that's how science works. You keep you keep eating, and you're like, oh, this is a barrel of lemon lime. Uh, you know, jelly beans, and in fact, that's how food inspection works, right? So, um, you know, what they do when they do food inspections is they'll crack open a crate and sample, like pull pull a couple heads of lettuce out and test them for E. coli and things like that. All right, none of E. coli, come on in. They don't test all of them. Right? They test a couple. They sample them. You know? And uh, you could be wrong. And, and we do get it wrong sometimes, right? So, um, one of the reasons why we have a uh, shipping um, issue right now is because they stepped up inspections. Right? They're doing more health inspections these days. And that's slowing down the flow of commerce around the world and causing shortages from everything from artificial Christmas trees to bicycles. Right? So, uh, yeah, just start the SRN out. It's not, it's not hard. Like, all you have to do is talk about some topic you're passionate about. And if you talk about something you're... And that's why I don't pick the topic for you, by the way. Because if I pick the topic, I'm like, you, you got to talk about primary sources, man, and how they're awesome. You're just like... Ah, it's like drawing blood from a stone. It's horrible. But there's got to be something we talked about this this semester that, that resonates with you. Racism, you know? Who likes that, you know? Like, nobody likes racism. Talk about racism. Talk about algorithmic bias. Talk about... You know, how much you hate Facebook or how much you love Twitter. Either way, it's all good. All you have to do is demonstrate the three different ways of arguing in it. Deductive, inductive, and abductive. Okay, so abductive reasoning is, uh, yeah, so inductive reasoning is science, basically. Science-based reasoning is all inductive in, in general. So abductive, abductive reasoning, which is the hardest for people to understand, uh, <laughs> Do you guys see how they're doing NFTs uh, for uh, the Spider-Man, uh, the next Spider-Man movie? Um, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll show you how to orange justice. It's funny. Um, I just see your mom's credit card social. <laughs> um, so, abductive reasoning is how Sherlock Holmes reasons. Do you guys, have you guys ever seen any Sherlock Holmes like the, the BBC show, read the books, Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, House, House is obviously Holmes, right? Like the House TV show, 
on 10 years ago or so about a doctor who's very snarky, who's Sherlock Holmes, but in a medical, you know. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about, Sherlock Holmes? So Sherlock Holmes um, says he does deductive reasoning. Let's play a game of deductions. And he and Mycroft, like, pick up a hat and they throw it to each other. Obviously, this person's an alcoholic. Tosses it back. Well, anyone could smell that. Uh, but look at the weave of this knitted hat. Clearly, the person is left-handed because all the knits go th this way. And throw it back. Uh, uh, I, I, mm, you can see cat hair on it. They must have pets. And they throw it back and forth. And they call it a game of deductions. That's actually not deductive reasoning. It confuses everybody. It's not deductive reasoning, right? If if you look at the fact that there's a hat that has cat hair on it, that's not a deduction. I mean, it's not a deductive argument, right? Because you, you know you could pick up cat hair like maybe maybe you're a vet. You know what I mean? Like there, just because you have cat hair on your hat doesn't mean you own a cat. You could go to a friend's house that has a cat. You you could be a vet. You know you could be on the subway and a cat jumps on your head. There, you know you don't you don't know. They're not doing deductions. They're doing abductive reasoning. Abductive reasoning is when you look at the evidence and make a best guess. What if they have a cat in the hat? Yeah, that's a good point. Are you still driving? <laughs> Don't text and drive. Okay, although it was worth it. All right. So, do you, do you guys understand? Like, deductive arguments can't be wrong, but abductive reasoning is like you're just looking at the evidence, and then you make a best guess as to what happened. This is how... You know, uh, detectives work, Sherlock Holmes works, um, uh, when conspiracy theory people uh, do abductive reasoning, they're not deducing anything, they're not, you know, they usually don't even use inductive reasoning, although they say, well, look, in the past, the government lied to us, therefore they must be lying to us now, this is a very sketchy kind of argument. Um, you know, conspiracy theorists say, well, look, you know, uh, Epstein, uh, you know, uh, uh, he was on suicide watch and the guards were asleep and the cameras, you know, leading to his cell were off. Um, and the, uh, the, uh, uh, coroner for the state said he hung himself, but the private coroner they brought in to examine him says the neck injuries, uh, were, uh, uh could have been, you know, the, the fracture of his neck vertebrae. Uh, could o could only have been done by strangulation, or is usually done from strangulation, and so they they reason from that that Epstein didn't kill himself, right? And then people on the other side said, yeah, most of the cameras were out, but the camera that was facing the uh, corridor leading into a cell was still on. That didn't show anybody coming in and out, and yeah, guards fall asleep, but that doesn't mean it's a conspiracy. People are just overworked. Uh, Bill Barr, who uh, you know was quitting the Trump administration at the time. Would have absolutely no reason to uh, cover it up. And he said it was just a series of tragic mistakes. And so that's how people argue on, on things like that, where, you know, you just have a collection of facts and people will like, you know, pick the facts that agree with them. You know, that's how they, you know, if you're not a critical thinker, they just pick the facts that only agree with them and ignore the other ones. Right. Critical thinkers try to look at all the facts, both for and against and, and weigh it. Right. So, um, conspiracy theorists tend to use correlation as not causation a lot. Yeah, that's true. Very true also. But, um, but that's all ab ab abductive reasoning. Okay, so abductive reasoning is, um, you know, the, there was a, a coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan, and there was also the Wuhan Institute of Virology right there, and so a lot of people look at that like, oh, that's a hell of a coincidence, you know? And... Um, and, and then they reason from that that it was a lab leak. And uh, and then other people say, you know, they've, they've looked at the data and the, the genomic sequence doesn't match up with the copy of the coronavirus they had at the Wuhan Institute. And, you know, we're pretty certain it a actually did come from the fish market. Then other people said, yeah, you know, like, uh, uh, what's his name? John Stewart's like, look, you know, the sign on the door says Coronavirus Research Institute. And, you know, it's a coronavirus leak, you know. If there was a if there was a a chocolate leak in Hershey, you know Pennsylvania, they wouldn't say, well, it could have been anything, you know. Like, look, it's the chocolate factory, you know, and, and that's abductive reasoning that they do, and and this is very common with um, 
and I, I don't want to be dismissive of it because it's it's how we have to reason when we don't have all the facts. You know what I mean? It's like it's how we reason when we've just got facts and we need to try to figure out um, is it more one or is it more the other? Right. So I, I don't want to make it sound like abductive reasoning is only used for conspiracy conspiracy theories because that's how police work. You know, they show up to a crime scene. They walk around, you know, like, okay, there's a, a bloody handprint on the wall. Um, the, uh, the door handle's been smashed. Uh, there's scratches on the inside of the window. Um, you know, and they walk around and they, they look at evidence and then they try to piece together. Okay. They let's recreate the crime scene, right? That's abductive reasoning. We, we got facts and we're going to try and make our best guess. And that's, that's what abductive reasoning is. It's the best guess we can do based on the evidence. Okay. Get a manifest how to be a fluent dobekin overnight. <laughs> They're experimenting on a human test subject. Yeah. It's, you know, trying to claw their way out, you know, maybe, I don't know. You know, it's a zombie outbreak. Who knows? So, uh, yeah. And, and, and police oftentimes have to make snap judgments. You know, uh, there's an argument. This person says this, this person says this. Who do you arrest? You look around. It's a knife on the ground. You know, like like the, they, they have to make these things. Because if they're wrong, then you might let a murderer go. You know? Or if you're wrong, you arrest the wrong person. Right? And that's not good. It's not fun being arrested from what I've heard. Uh, I've had to bail out my roommates enough times in college. Um, among Us. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, among Us is exactly abductive reasoning. We might even call this Among Us reasoning. <laughs> I mean, Mr. of the Future, you cannot understand it yet. <laughs> that is too funny. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, sometimes it's not, right? Sometimes, like, you directly see a person murder another person in Among Us, and you hit the button, and you're like, yep, it was Ashley. She just gutted this person in front of me. And, um, but then she's like, no, I, I saw, I saw Bill kill the person, you know, and then people have to vote and you're like, I don't know who sounds more, who sounds more uh, credible, you know, the professor or, uh, this, uh, random person who posts memes on, on, uh, on, uh, on discord. And, and of course they're going to vote against the, the professor and, and toss him out of the airlock because it's funny. Right. So. Um, it's weird now though. Right. So, uh, but do you guys understand? Like that's, that's the reasoning used in Among Us. Like you'll, you'll say, well, you know, I saw this person follow that person in there and then he came out and then that person was gone. So maybe that person's, they, they vented maybe. And if you don't know what Among Us is, like you have no idea what I'm talking about, but basically, yeah, you're just looking at, you, you know, and people will share things, but some of the people sharing things are going to be lying because they're imposters. And so, um, <laughs> um, that's funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's abductive reasoning. And so, for your essay, uh, present a set of evidence and say, the best, you know, the best guess we can make about this is this. Okay? So... Uh, yeah, and it does bug me that, you know, it's a science of deduction. No, it's not. Dedu you're not using deduction. You're using abduction. Just nobody knows that word. It sounds like, I don't know, some sort of, like, workout. You know, I'm, I'm going to go I'm gonna go on the abductive. <laughs> I'm going to go on the abductor, you know. <laughs> you know, work on my abs, my ab on the abductive machine, you know. So, um, <laughs> town of Salem, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for today. Um, do you guys understand deduction, induction, and abductive reasoning? Okay. Uh, yeah, science. Yeah, one of the problems with science is that, you know, it's based on induction. Induction isn't certain. You can always be wrong. Yeah, so. uh, all you have to do is use them. You know, use all three. And, and, and all three of them are, are, are good in different circumstances. I'm, you know, like I said, don't, um, you know, I might've gone too heavy on like the conspiracy theory element of this. Uh, abductive reasoning is perfectly r reasonable. 
right? It's like what you have to do. It's like I, I don't know who this I don't know who the suspect is, you know. So let's let's try to figure it out. You know, it's it's perfectly fine. It's just less certain than deductive reasoning or inductive reasoning, right? Uh, still a little lost on abduction. Um, so let's say that um, let's say that you've got a student in your class, and this kid's a real troublemaker. And uh, you catch the kid graffitiing uh, all the time, like he's got a, a marker and he like marks up his desk all the time. And then you, you go out for a break, you come back, and there's some graffiti on the wall behind him. You're like, bro, I told you not to graffiti that anymore. Is that inductive reasoning or abductive reasoning, Bailey? Is this, uh, is this a conclusion based on past experience, or is it... It's inductive reasoning. <laughs> because this kid keeps graffitiing, right? And he keeps graffitiing and you see graffiti, you're like, all right, it was you, you know? Um, <laughs> gotcha. Right, inductive reasoning is based on past experience. But if you leave the room, let's say you leave the classroom, you come back, you don't have any such past experience and there's graffiti on the wall behind this kid. You're like, bro, why'd you do that? He's like, I didn't do it. It's behind you though. That's abductive reasoning, right? Uh, I, I only stepped out for 10 seconds. I came back in. There wasn't enough time for Bob at the front of the class to run all the way back there, graffiti behind your head, and run back up. You know what I mean? That's abductive reasoning. Okay. See you, Alexander. See you, Ben. You know what I mean? So uh, inductive reasoning is because of the past, this must be true. Abductive reasoning is here's the set of facts, you know, You've got a marker on your desk that's a glitter pink marker. The graffiti on the wall behind your head is in glitter pink. That's your pin, bro. I know you did it. Don't lie to me. No, man. Uh, Bob, he ran up. He put the pin on my desk. Graffiti behind me. Left it here to frame me, man. He, he went back up all in 10 seconds. That's abductive reasoning. Right? Like, sure. Because you could be wrong. Could have happened that way. He could have run up, graffiti, framed the kid, went back up. Be like, bro, don't lie to me about this. You know, come on. Are we supposed to put that into the essay? A glitter pink pen? No, just uh, for your essay, what you have to do is um, present a set of facts and be like, therefore, the most plausible explanation for this is this. Yep. Uh, if you're talking about, um, you know, primary sources, which I would write my essay on because I'm weirdly passionate about it. Um, I would say, look, um, uh, we've got a situation where Fox News and CNN will report on the same matter and have drastically different conclusions in both their headlines and their articles. And I'll present case 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 therefore abductive reasoning and you'll mark it with abductive reasoning by the way for your essay i want you to tag it abduct therefore um the best explanation for this is that um cnn and fox are politically motivated they're changing the stories to fit their political biases could be wrong could absolutely be wrong about it but that's the point of abductive reasoning is like, this is the best fit for the evidence. Like, you know, if you have mother Jones, which is a left wing magazine and you've got, um, I don't know, uh, the daily mail in the UK, which is oriented, uh, right wing a bit, I guess. Um, look, they both talked about this case and, uh, they came to opposite conclusions. Therefore it was their political. The only difference is their political biases. Therefore, you know, and then, and then you say, okay, that's why we need to go after, primary sources because you want to just go after objective facts and not people's lenses and biases on these things. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> does that make sense, Bailey? It's how, it's how we normally, it's how we normally reason. Like, um, it, it's it's a complicated word for a simple idea. 
trending at H&M. That's, that's where I take my daughter, by the way, H&M. Um, yeah, how we normally reason is we just weigh up the weight, the, the evidence for one thing. And we weigh up the evidence against it. And whichever one has more weight, that's what we believe. That's abductive reasoning. So, uh, it might not be enough, uh, you know, and, and depending on the relative weight, we can be like partly convinced, mostly convinced, highly convinced, absolutely convinced, you know, depending on the relative amount of evidence, you know, so marketing scandals, right, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, I've heard H and M has gone downhill recently also. So, all right. Um, so that's it for today. Uh, if you have any questions about that, uh, post on the help center. Um, I'll make sure to lock down the, uh, the chat channel as soon as possible today. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back on uh, Friday and, and cover anything else that needs to be covered. Okay. So got class on Friday, Monday and Wednesday. And if you guys want class on Friday, we can do that or we can just mess around and play games or something. I don't know. All right. So thanks for coming out, you guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.